Hello, everybody. I'm super, super, super excited today. Um, we have Cindy back with us, my friend from Sacred Garden Yoga, where I teach on Sundays. And I'm so excited because we're going to start kind of a new series where we're going to start talking about the planets and their kind of personality traits and what they do to help people understand astrology more. And before we get started, though, Cindy, I do want to show everybody your... Um, your YouTube channel again. So guys, before we even get into the topic at hand, I want to make sure everybody goes over and subscribes to Cindy's YouTube page. She's got so much stuff on here. If you like her conversations that she and I have had on some topics, she has other guests on as well. She also has some practices up for people who are interested in exploring some different uh, yoga lineages. And we also have here, we'll get into this later as well, because we have the website too, guys, for Sacred Garden. And we're going to be talking about with astrology. Um, Cindy also offers all these different courses as well that are kind of mystical uh, self-development courses, if you will, that uh, as you've said, Cindy, your yoga shala isn't just a yoga shala. It is like a mystery school. And so with the uh, astrology we're going to speak about today, she has some courses as well coming up about the astrology and all that kind of stuff. So please make sure you check out her website um, so you can keep up with all that. We'll look at that again after the show is over. But how are you today, Cindy? I'm good. Thank you. I just got finished teaching a yoga class. And so, yeah, I'm hanging out here at the, at the I've decided to set up the shop out here at the front where we sell a lot of our fun little gadgets and tools that also help with the stuff that we're going to be talking about as well, especially these little ritual candles when we talk about like calling down planets or doing, yep. um, you know, kind of like ceremonial. Exactly. Yeah. These, these are from rituals. Cindy's shop, guys. These are from Cindy's shop. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you can get them, uh, I think, on Amazon or, you know, other online places as well. But, but, and yeah. I've got a ton of uh, rocks from Cindy's shop. I actually picked up more on Sunday. When I, I'm there on Sundays, you guys, and I was telling my friend Stephanie that you've met that I, I like buying from you because I know you know what you're doing when it comes to this kind of stuff. And so um, you've got pendulums there. You've got tarot cards, oracle cards, all, yep, pendulum tree, mm -hmm. like all sorts of stuff. You got sage there. Um, now, if somebody, sorry, Robbie. I love second. that you're turning into that girl, by the way. You're turning you into what? that. I love that you're turning into that girl, you know, like that, 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 that person that the one that does crystals and pendulums. And oh yeah. 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 No. Well, I, I you had that crystals, girl now. Like I've had some older ones I've had for a while, but since I started, I usually kept them kind of to the side, but since I started doing YouTube, who I've been pulling them out. I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got awesome. my, I got my pyramid here. As I drop it, I got my little pyramid here. I got my sage here. So, um, so yeah, I love it. And, and I, and as I told, I actually have this too. I keep this on my desk. It's the 50 cent coin. I got this, uh, when I was in, uh, Gulf Shores a few months back. And, um, we know that the Kennedys are playing a super important role in what's happening right now in our world. And we don't, for those who are not from America, the 50 cent coin, we don't see this that often, do we, Cindy? Mm -hmm. No. I mean, it's, I think I see the silver dollar more than I like the actual dollar more than I do the 50 cent. Yeah, it's super rare to get a 50 cent coin. And so when I was handed this as change, when I was at the convenience store in Gulf Shores and it's got Kenny's face, I've kind of been holding oh, wow. on to it because I, I don't think anything is accidental in this life. And so yeah. I kind of saw that as like a God wink. And so I've kept, I keep that on my desk now too. So, so yes. And Cindy, for anybody like watching us that wants to get into like crystals or saging and they don't know where to go, if they don't live in Atlanta, can they order from your shop? Is that possible? If someone doesn't live in Atlanta, I mean, some small things probably. I'm not, well, now, because I don't have like an online store. Right. You would actually have to call me and say, hey, I want that and I want that. <laughs> and then I can send you, it would be like old school, I actually have an online shop. But people have done that before. I've had friends who yeah. have said, hey, you know, you have this. Can you, can you send me, can you mail me, you know, mail me that? And then, yeah, I yeah, just charge them on their credit card that they give me. But yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's kind of things like that. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you, I see the, if you guys like are interested in talking to Cindy, I guess you can message her and see if you don't live in Atlanta and she could probably help you out with some stuff. So she's, I trust all of what everything Cindy has in her, in the front room of her, of her shawl. It's all, it's all 
worthwhile stuff. So, um, so with that being said, should we get into it, Cindy? We're going to talk about the sun today, right? Yes. And we just started the one of the courses. The, it's, it's called Ignite. We just started the in in person one this past Saturday, and that's what we're starting off with. Where um, like currently, I feel like I'm very much in the uh, yeah that course right there. I'm in the energy of the sun because I've started talking about it. And it's funny because when you start to like even talk about the sun or you you're calling down the influence of the sun, it affects me even when I'm not thinking about it. like, for instance, I just got finished teaching a yoga class and I was talking about like the theme of the class was, you know, being intentional with your day, you know, setting mm, intentions becoming clear about how you want your your day and your life to unfold i'm like oh that's the sun i mean that's that was the sun speaking speaking through because that is like aspects in the energy of the sun and it's interesting how it plays that way like when you really start to 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 call down down these uh, influences and i've said this like probably a thousand times when i'm on your channel it you know it's based off of the axiom of as as above so below and you've yeah. probably heard that um, lots and lots of times anyways, but that is the essence of, of what we're talking about here is that these planets, and even though the sun isn't a planet and the moon isn't technically a planet, they're, con they're considered like this, the, the top seven planetary influences or they're part of the seven planetary influences because when uh, they started with this astrology long, long, like, you know, our ancestors long, long time ago, uh, those were the ones that were visible in the sky so because right. i get the question a lot like what about the outer planets like neptune and pluto and uranus and um they just weren't seen at the time and they, like classical astrology or hellenistic um astrology that's why they don't they don't consider them in the the, the seven main uh influences because they weren't discovered at the time when all of this was created but right. more modern astrology of course you know takes into consideration the, the outer planets but well, yeah so even though the sun and the moon aren't planets they're they're celestial beings oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. they're powers and that's what we were talking about this on sunday after my class and i've i've kind of joked about this on my channel you know at this point in our in our unveiling and our great awakening, I have no idea. We've talked about this, Cindy, what we're even standing on. Like, what does the planet even look like? What what are planets? Like, they're not what, what we've been told they are. We know that for sure. And in one of the missing books of the Bible, The Apocalypse of Abraham, where Abraham actually goes up into the different firmaments, it actually, God tells Abraham that the stars and the planets live in the fifth firmament and that they're messengers, well, anybody who grew up in a, any type of a Christian home, what is an angel? An angel means a messenger. So when I read that, I was like, this makes sense because I followed astrology for a very long time and it does affect you. And if the planets carry these, these divine essences of, of with what as above, so below within ourselves, as do angels, then that makes sense that there's a correlation between the two of them. And I loved how you said about pulling it down because when we pray for help or when we talk to the angels, we're, we're bringing them down to us as well. Um, and I know you said, uh, do you want to go and tell them who the angel is associated with the sun? Michael, Michael, Archangel, my favorite. Yeah, Archangel Michael. The sun is also associated when you look back at, you know, the angel. Now, there is so much different uh, opinion out there about astrology. And right. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of information out there. I mean, there's probably as many opinions and thoughts about astrology as there are stars in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, the the stuff that i talk about is probably based more on the older like hellenistic because there's like the vedic astrology and and all that as well and you know one is not right one is not wrong there's just different opinions and just like yoga you know how there's about a thousand different types of yoga out there different different thoughts different opinions about it but um when you're when you're working like opinions are like assholes everyone's got one exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and so there's you know the aspect of uh working with the planets like when you like through astrology when you look at your chart 
You know, most people are familiar with the natal chart and how the planets sit within your chart. But then there's also planetary magic. And planetary yeah. magic is when you call down the planets to, to help you and to assist you. And there's like this, this beautiful story because I love all these like origin stories that all these different cultures have. And there's this uh, beautiful story that that uh, came from from someone that I'm that, that I've learned from as well. And I'm learning from uh, astrology and, and, it, and he's more of the, the Hellenistic. But that, you know, we are our star souls or star beings. And before we incarnated onto Earth, you know, their story goes is that your soul actually takes like these stops, these pit stops at the planets. <laughs> it takes a pit stop over at the sun and over at the moon and Jupiter and Venus, not necessarily in this order, but, you know, Mars and Mercury. And it gives you like when when you spend time on the planets, it gives you information about how you are to proceed within your incarnation when you land on this earth. And I love looking at it that way. You know, I just thought that that was like just a really sweet interpretation. And it, and then if you're like, OK, well, well, what did the sun tell me or, or what did Jupiter tell me? You look on your chart. And your chart is is like a, a summary of of what the um, the planets told your soul about how you know you're going to use the energy of the sun or how you're going to use the energy of the moon within your incarnation. It's all like built into your chart. So, anyways, I just thought that that was like a a cool cool story, a cool way of looking at this that totally re resonated with me. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I like that. That that really makes makes sense to me. And it goes along the lines of, of what you're talking about, how, you know, these planets are messengers mm -hmm. um, where, yeah, I mean, you actually spent time on, you know, on these on these planets or, or stars um, because on your chart, too, you don't only have planets, you, you know, you have stars, you have like, like Charon, and you have all these other stars and meteors and everything. So when you think about like, how where our soul traveled or where our soul has been before we even landed on this planet and how much information that we actually contain you know what i mean but you can it's look at your things. chart to give you some of that some of that details and some of that information yeah, yeah i am a yeah. total novice when it comes to looking at charts like charts are still super duper complicated to me but what um, I do have a fair amount of understanding is the like what the planets hold and how you can call them down and how you can use them to, to assist you and help you right. in making decisions in your life. And just having that, that I, you know, knowledge is, well, they say ignorance is bliss, but I don't know how blissful ignorance is when it's gotten to where we are in our world today. But knowledge is absolutely power, you know, for your own self to help you guide yourself and make and make. Um, inform decisions on how you proceed in your life, depending on what energies you're playing with, as far as your own soul's template, you know, and, um, and that I've actually had my, so I've, I've, I've been like obsessed with astrology for a really long time. I mean, the first tattoo I got was the, you can tell it's old, the Aquarius, my sign, the Aquarius, <laughs> but, um, but I've also had my bed. That's the Aquarius. It's so old. I forget I have it. Um, it's, uh, I have one right here too, but I, I don't, you know, nobody sees that. So, <laughs> but, um, but, um, uh, I, I, uh, what was I going to say now? Oh, I had my Vedic chart done in India once, uh, but my philosophy teacher in India actually did uh, the Vedic chart and I was expecting it to be really different from my, what I called my Western astrology chart, but it actually wasn't. It was pretty, um, it, they mirrored each other. And so, and maybe that was just happened to be like my chart specifically as said that they were able to mirror each other, but even with the dis different systems, you could still see the same patterning, um, of, of, um, of, uh, your, your template. So, so I thought that was very, very fascinating. And he actually gave me a copy of the chart on the computer. And I was like, I don't even know why you're giving me this because it's just dots on a paper to me. So, yeah, so exactly. It's like lines and dots. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, so, so with the sun and, and you know, I mean, we, we could, cause I know most people watching this channel are probably going to comment and be like the sun that we have now isn't our sun. I am aware of that. I think Cindy's probably aware of that, that, that the sun we have is not actually our sun. There is like a crystal sun that's 
coming back into play. That's our real sun. So I'm assuming when we talk about the power of the sun, the real sun for planet Earth, we are talking about the more crystalline sun um, as being the, the authentic sun. But even with the sun in general, I mean, we can't live without the sun. The sun is something just physically we cannot live without. We have to have it in order to, to function um any type of any life force on this planet needs that sun to function and so and so that in itself is an important role and, and i think a lot of the planets are that way we just we're just not aware of it so what else is it about the sun sydney that because i know when you guys do the sun you spend like a whole month on it right in your course well they're huge one thing you realize when you start working with the planets and you do call them down they are huge they're big and we did used to do this course where we would spend two weeks with a planet at a time. And then we realized, oh my God, that, that's just not enough time. I mean, you can spend a lifetime, like a whole lifetime, but you realize how big and potent that their their energies and their influence are on us. Because, you know, as I said, and, and as you said, they're reflections of us, they're mirrors of us and our potential and what we hold. So when you're 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 calling down the the, the influence of the planets, it's not like you're calling them down like Santa Claus and saying, hey, right, give me right. this, give me this, give me that. And it, it's more of, OK, show me what I'm not seeing about myself. OK, like show me um, what I need to learn from you so that I can remember that about myself. That's more right. along how it works than just asking, asking the sun or asking the Jupiter, Jupiter for for stuff or for things to happen. They're like, no, we're going to reflect back to you and show you you know, through um, through our little template, how that uh, or to, to remind you of what maybe you've forgotten about yourself. Do you see what I mean? Right. And so the sun reminds us too of spirit. That's one of the essence of the sun. It's it's a very much a reflection of the Christ consciousness as well. It's spirit because the sun, and not only is it the life force, but it's consistent. The yeah. sun is always there. It's always shining and it's consistent the way it rises from east to west. Mm -hmm. So there is this consistency to the sun that's a reflection of the consistency of our own like Purusha, our own yes. spirit and our own consciousness. Yeah. So one, uh, first and foremost, it's a, it's a reflection of that. It's a, it's a reminder of our own constant light that's always shining within us uh, and that it never goes out. You know, our right. light never goes out and, and we and that we hold all, you know, the wisdom, the light and everything within us. The sun is a reminder of that. So it is very much a reflection of like that, that Christ consciousness, our spirit and to remind us of our spirit. So I'm, I'm, I have some notes here that I'm looking at, too, as well. Oh, you're fine. Um, you're fine. OK, and then the, uh, a, a second aspect is that uh, the sun is uh, shows us or it's a reflection of our own purpose and our own mission. Uh, if you're if you're lacking clarity in your life and you're not sure exactly like, OK, what's my purpose? What's my mission uh, right now on this world, on this planet or maybe just right here at this moment? Because sometimes, you know, missions change. They shift depending on where you are in your life. But if you're wanting clarity on that, like just clarity on your mission and your purpose and why you're here, then the, the sun reminds you of that as well. All right. So that, that's a, another way that you can work with the sun. And, and uh, you know, like I said, I was just teaching a class uh, um, right before this one, and it was about being intentional. And that's an aspect of the sun as well, because it gives you clarity. How are you going to move through through your day? The sun gives you clarity and it gives you focus, obviously, because the sun is just all about that that radiant, luminous uh, yeah. uh, aspect of being clear, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and reminding us and helping us to bring clarity and to lift the fog when we are uncertain. But it also means that there are certain things that we need to do. The sun is fire; it's an aspect of fire. And fire is also like, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? What kind of what kind of actions are you going to take in your life that's going to be a reflection of your purpose and your mission? And it's going to ask you to do that as well. So, OK, so you, here's your here's your purpose. Here's your mission. OK, so now now what are you going to do? And so it's about getting intentional as well in deciding, OK, these are the steps.
that seasons that are going to align me with my higher self. It's going to align me with my spirit and it's going to align me uh, with my purpose. But I got to go do that thing. I got to go. I got to go be that thing. It's not just going to happen by, you know, sitting around like a bump on a log and expecting and just expecting it to, you know, magically appear without without you doing anything about it. You see what I mean? So that's also like an aspect of the sun is that it it um, it gives you some of that momentum. At least that's the way I feel it. It gives you a sense of momentum to jump start and get moving in your life again. And the yeah. way it shows up in your chart, though, too, is like where where your sun sign is in your chart. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, it'll so it'll show up in a house. Can we talk right? about that though? So people who are new to astrology, when someone says a sun sign, what does that mean? That is, you know, where the sun is placed within your chart, and that's the sign that you know. It yeah, is a sign a that like, yeah. oh, when you go yeah. to the bar, what sign are you? You're yeah. going to tell them what your sun sign is. I'm an Aquarius. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Sagittarius. Yes. Sagittarius. <laughs> yes. That's your that's your sun sign. That's usually what you know. And what when people are asking you what your sign is, you're usually telling them what your sun sign is. And so your sun has a placement on your chart uh with the sign and also with a house right my son for instance is in my 10th house and it's in the sign of Sagittarius and it's it's good to um like to 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 get a feel for for both of those the right. um the 10th house is um, again I'm still kind of a novice at all of this but my my 10th house is the or, or the tenth house in general is like, for instance, the house of career and of uh, socially how people like how you show up socially to people. It's like your legacy, and so my son sign is in the tenth house, which means my mission. So if you think of your son, is a reflection of like life purpose and mission, the things that give you life. Right. Right. Mine is in my tenth house. And so my son is really happy when I am in that, uh, in like in this realm here of like, um, of helping people and uh, leaving a legacy. You know what I mean? So the, the, everything you're saying, I'm just realizing with the tarot cards, the 10th, the 10 of pentacles, the 10th, that's a legacy card as well. So you can kind of even see the history of all these old divinations are coming through from astrology, right? A lot of them are coming in from the practice of astrology. Oh, I mean, tarot cards are astrology. Oh, yeah. Very much yeah. so astrology. Got to, yeah. And um, and then the sign. So the, the house tells you what arena that planet is in. Like, okay, so my sun sign is very happy in the arena of the 10th house that's you know my mission a lot of what gives me purpose is like you know being out there the work that i do destiny like you know and legacy mm -hmm. and then the sagittarius your sign is some of the details so i'm a sagittarius and Sagittarius is we are uh, philosophers, we're the gypsies, the philosophers and students, in essence. Okay, so, you know, along the realm of that, the career and legacy, I love talking about, it's part, you know, because I love talking about philosophy. That's just my thing. Okay. I love learning That's about different and cultures. I have really, we have really <laughs> wild conversations by ourselves after class on Sunday. If anybody walked in, they'd be like, <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> But that's how exactly, yeah. But that's how it it works. You know, when you can look at your planet within your chart, see what house it's in, we see what sign it's in. But but understanding that your sun is that that aspect of you, is the aspect yeah. of like mission and purpose and all that. And then when yeah, when you're working uh, purposefully with the sun, and when you call it down, you can call it down with certain rituals and ceremonies. Because there is a there is correspondences that go along with let's say the sun, like a yellow candle, for instance. You would use the color yellow, citrus, fruits, and, and it might sound crazy, like putting like setting up an altar space and putting fruit on there, like putting the orange or putting you know a, a, a lemon on there and lighting a candle and 
pyrite, you know, pyrite to get or gold. I mean, if you actually have gold, like gold mm -hmm. is a great um, offering that you live that you leave on your altars. Lots of different foods and, and just yeah. uh, certain certain um, crystals and stones that you can place on the altar. You can light it. Sunday is the day yes. of the sun. We've talked about that before. Um, there yeah, are planetary yeah. hours. Yeah. So there oh, yeah, are absolutely. Hours in the day. I don't have my, my thing to see what planetary hour we're at right now, but there are planetary hours during the day where you're like, okay, right now we're in alignment with, with the sun. Yeah. Um, so all of this, if you're wanting to pull down and work with the energy of the sun, you can set up sacred space to do all that and, and to open and yourself up receiving the influence. I'm more familiar, obviously, with the um, Ayurvedic uh, dosha system, not just with the body, but with the elements of the daytime, too. And so that makes when you start working with that, it, it helps you understand the um, personality of time as we know it as well. And it's it's true. Like, I know when pizza time is in the day and the night and pizza is fire. So like, I know that I have to go to bed before 10 o'clock, but because if, if I don't go to bed before 10 o'clock, I'm going to be awake until two o'clock in the morning because you enter into pizza time. If um, I had a, a teacher say once, like who had a little, a kid, like when your kid gets a stomach upset stomach, chances are he or she is probably going to start puking at midnight because that's pizza time. And when you start to work with those elements, you can plan your day better because, and I've said this before it, when I was studying Skinwalker Ranch and I was, and we've talked about this, Cindy, the difference between like black magic and white magic. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing black magic. You're, you're actually change, trying to change nature to suit your will. When you're practicing white magic or light worker, you're working with nature to help you move peacefully with what divinity is giving you. You're not trying to change anything. You're just working with it. You're bettering yourself. You know, and I want I want people to understand that when we talk about these rituals, it's about you. It's about you. You know, Ram Dass even talks about this with like an altar. You know, a lot of times that is about that is giving you a dristy, you a focal mm -hmm. point in order to then bring it back into yourself to fix yourself. And I love that because it, it does help so much. Well, you're calling down the higher aspects of yourself. That's yep. what you did. That's what I love about the the planetary or even if you're working with the earthly forces. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you mean you're just working with air, with wind, with fire, with, with the earth itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the, the cosmic, the, the celestial beings are just aspects of nature. It's just out there, right. but it's still nature nonetheless. And this kind of nature and magic to me, it's like the highest form of magic because you are calling down the highest versions of, of yourself you know, again, aspects of you that you may have forgotten, or you might be in the fog, you're not in clarity. And you're like, no, okay, show me, like, show me, show me the highest version of me. And uh, to me, I mean, that is the highest form, the highest form of magic that you can do. I've been doing some channeling work with my higher self recently um, with some other people. And I got to tell you, I like my higher self. Oh, she's way cooler than me. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> she's way cooler. She's real, real she's real laid back. She's real relaxed about things. So. <laughs> Definitely. I get that because we do have that higher self and that lower self. And a lot of times we get stuck in the lower self, which is where we have the work to do where the higher self is always without ego, without, it's just, it is what it is. And it's, it's very trusting and it's almost surrenders to the flow of nature, but the lower self is what needs to be reminded of that, 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 that higher self exists. Um, so I love that you are, you are just bringing it all, it all comes. And you even said that to me once, Cindy, about black magic, that everything we do, it has to come through us first. And so when you're doing black magic, it has to go through the person first in order to send it out. That's why a lot of people who practice black magic will show signs of it physically. Their body starts to fall apart. Teeth start falling out. Um, mm -hmm. Stuff starts happening. Then you can see it because it has to ride through them first. Um, that's There's a dark all. thing. Yeah. Darkening that happens. Um, and the idea behind the planets, too, is that they also hold all the aspects and influences of our humanity. Mm -hmm. And this is where you get into some of the malefic stuff, the malefic ideas, uh, like, say, about Saturn and about Mars. Because Saturn and Mars hold the energies of the things that we might think of as negative or we might not like so much about our humanity. But some right. things have got to hold it, like some aspects of the if so if the if the planets 
the ones that we're working with, if they hold every aspect of us, including aspects of our human nature, then they have to go somewhere. So Saturn and Mars are, are the two planets that hold, now they don't hold only that, but they yeah. do hold aspects of some of the, the, the darker spectrums of humanity. And this right. is where, uh, when you talk about like um, black magic or anything where you, know, you hear about Saturn and Mars being used for that because they do hold essences of aspects of our humanity, which are, you know, more along the sun, like, like Saturn is, um, he's an elder planet. Yeah. Uh, very, like when you, when you feel Saturn, it's like very gravitating. Like it's like, boom, he comes in like, ooh, like that. But it's an elder planet, you know, elder planet about time, but he's also a planet of death. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, like the aspects of death that we might not necessarily love so much because um, he is the end of things. Right. Uh, you know, I, I was I was reading some of my my own coursework uh, in, in a course that I'm taking on astrology about how Saturn is that feeling, for instance, like you just have this this great party, but then the party is over and then everything is silent and everything is quiet. And the lot kind of like that life has has come out of that party that that's like the essence of Saturn. Or so, like when you see in movies, sometimes a gush of wind comes in on a blustery day and it takes out the light, you know, it takes out the, the candlelight and it takes out the fire and the hearth. That's Saturn. Mm -hmm. That's the energy. It's, it's, it's very, it's quiet. It's silent, but it's that silence of something that just ended, you know, yeah. and, it, and that and it can be an, a very unnerving feeling within someone because if you've ever had that experience before you know it's like ooh, it, it, it has like this kind of unnerving feeling well that's that's an aspect of saturn and um not a good i mean not a bad thing but not yeah. necessarily the best <laughs> the best feeling thing no you see what and i mean that is, we talked about the saturnalian brotherhood with um catherine and shanti and mornay for christmas because they're they're um the dark forces have manipulated these these planets that hold these elements and made them, I know somebody channeled Saturn. Um, somebody was telling me someone had channeled, I think it was Taylor that told me someone was channeling Saturn's energy and Saturn kept, kept saying that he felt like, and I have to spell this word because of um, censorship, but he felt like he had been raped -E by this dark group because they had just overused what Saturn was made for. Um, and it was so funny. I'm laughing because on Sunday, uh, Cindy handed me my, my tax form. And she goes, speaking of Saturn, here's Saturn. So that's also elements of Saturn, right? It's like paying your bills, you know, stuff that we all, it's like the matrix, like not necessarily the negative matrix, just, just like the, the things you have to do to be a human being, like even the, the boring errands you have to run, like that is part of Saturn, um, you know? And so, yeah, and, that, and I think that moving forward, we, we, we will be bringing Saturn back to its like original template, you know, of, of just being that kind of that, because we are living in a cycle as, as living beings, we live in cycles and every beginning has to have an end. And so that is the Saturn energy of the end. And the yes. Yeah. Just like, boom, that's time when something is just done and complete and you know, it. it's like, you feel it in your heart and you're like, Ooh, you know, that's that, that still quiet force that is like, okay, we are done with that. That is Saturn. And, and Saturn is also the, the uh, elder of time. But yeah. time that comes, uh, I mean, yes, like time as you move throughout your day, but then the, also the wisdom that you gain with time. So it's, it's the, the gift of Saturn, like the, the gifts that we receive from Saturn, the gifts of knowledge and the wisdom that we receive from Saturn, it's usually the gifts that come with time. It's like a, you're waiting for a fine wine to uh, like a fine wine needs time in the order for it to be rich and full and, and to have all the essence and flavors into it. Saturn is, Saturn's energy and Saturn's gifts are that same way. It's like they come with experience, with more time on this planet. And, uh, but once you learn the lesson and the gift of Saturn, they can never ever be taken away from you because it, you it's it's so anchored within your soul at that point because you've spent so much time cultivating it that there is a certainty to it and, and an essence of it that can't be taken away which is like when you get older 
you know, I just turned 49 and there is something, you know, like when you start to step into the age of the crone, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm in that cronism. It's not a bad thing, but that's like the wisdom and the, you know, just stuff that you do, even when you're in your forties or maybe you start to get in your late, you're just like, I'm going to put up with any kind of shit anymore. You know, yeah. there's just a certain wisdom that you get. That's take a Saturn Saturn wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Oh, well, I always say, I know I would never want to go back to my twenties for the life of me. Oh, I know. Right. Yeah. Well, we talk about 27 has, you have the Saturn return at 27. We spoke about that a little bit with, um, Catherine and, uh, and then guys, I'll post that episode down in the description box below if you guys missed it. Cause we did talk about the Saturn return at 27 and, and it's interesting because I think we did speak about too, you know, I know that they moved the age of adolescence up to 23, but I think you even brought up that like your brain's not even done developing until what's your mid to late twenties. And so it makes sense. The Saturn return would come around the age of 27, um, where a lot of people that's when, again, they're, yeah, they're settling down. They're starting to get married. They're starting to have kids. Like they're taking on a new, a new path of life. You know, there's some mistakes you can make at 22 that are cute and okay, but make the same mistake at 27, 28. And it's not cute anymore. You know? So there is a different patterning there that people expect, almost expect you to have a little bit more wherewithal that planets like Saturn will give you. Um, yeah, maturity. Does, you know, it, there's yeah. a certain essence that happens in your later twenties. There's a certain maturity that you hit, partly because of the development of your brain, where things have solidified more. And that's what Saturn is like. Time, the maturity that you that you uh, get after having having had experiences already and learning things the hard way. <laughs> You know, yeah. some of the lessons of Saturn certainly comes comes along that way. Now, when you're working with Saturn, now that's not a planet that I call down very much. I mean, I have. I actually did it recently, but it's probably one that you want to have more. You need some gumption to call down Saturn <laughs> because Saturn is going to like show you some. And, and there's no I mean, you're talking about like heart, you know, endings and and like shadow aspects and things like that. So, you know, calling down Saturn, you can do it, but you just have to, you know, be ready. probably have more experience under your belt, understand what you're going to get when, when that happens. And, uh, you know, that's it, it, even in the, in the course that we, that we do, since it's more um, like fundamentals and it's starting to introduce the planets, you know, we talk about Saturn because Saturn is important, like he's an elder planet, but we don't necessarily like call him down because yeah. that's like, that's pretty, that's pretty hard. That's, that's hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and sometimes one. you don't need for Saturn. Like if you are, you're talking about, you know, being in the matrix, you know, most of the time you don't need more Saturn in your life. You're already inundated in it already. Yes. And again, you I need it more or something that's going to lift you out of it. And I want to make that very clear, clear guys. Cause I know we've spoken a lot about the Saturnalian brotherhood and, and the fact that the dark group uses Saturn, but they don't use, they, they use Saturn to an extreme where the, where, to the point where Saturn's not even happy about it as it was channeled. Saturn's not even happy with what they're doing. Saturn just represents necessary obstacles that we have to go through as human beings. Like the second right. sutra of the, or excuse me, the first sutra of the second pot, it even talks about pain being necessary. And sometimes Saturn brings that kind of like gut punchy type life situations. Um, and, and, and so when we're talking about calling down Saturn, it gets, it's for you to have experiences for yourself to grow right. and develop. So you're a better human being or a better version of yourself. We're not talking about anything having to do with anybody else, but you, I mean, one of the mm -hmm. things I find the most interesting about Saturn is like, even, and people don't even know this earrings for women that started as part of a Saturn type of, uh, uh, ritual of wedding bands on the left finger, that's Saturn. That's the rings of Saturn. Um, and so, and you think about like something like marriage on the human level, that is a time-based practice, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. you until death do you part, the vows you take, um, which most, a lot of people don't, don't usually to, to divorce do you part at this point in our human history, but that's fine, whatever. Um, you do you boo. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a beginning, middle and end. And that ring of Saturn is on that finger. Um, and the, the black caps we wear at graduation. I mean, there's so much that has to do with the Saturnalian uh, ritualistic practice. However, using it in its right format, it is coming back through to these time 
these obstacles that time presents to us that are really for our own betterment if we know how to ride them properly. A lot of people don't know how to ride, like, ride them properly, hence why we have to live many lives. But, um, but they are, they're, they're all, it's, none of it's supposed to be done in, in, um, to hurt you or to, or to ruin you, but more to bring you kind of to your knees a little bit so you can then, and you've said this before, Cindy, in order to de- ascend, you have to descend. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you know, to um, to ascend, at least the way I see it, the way I look at it, the way I've experienced it and the way I've seen that experience through so many people is you have to go through all your human stuff first. Mm-hmm. It's not like you can go through the process of ascension while avoiding all of your stuff. Yeah, it's like you kind of come down and you got to look at look at all the stuff. Look at look at you know everything that makes you human. Uh, yes, you're the divine. The divinity is there. That's the sun, right? Like your yeah, divinity, there. Yeah. your sun, your divinity is constant. That light will always be there, even if you change forms, like, you know, Saturn comes and and takes this form away from you. But your light, that light is never really diminished. You know, you're just going from form from form to form. And that's that's the sun. You know, that's what the sun is there to remind you of. Um, So that that's the constant. Like so divinity is constant. But, you know, we were incarnated on a planet, you know, on earth here, beautiful, beautiful planet earth, which comes with so many different layers and layers and layers of experiences. And, and it's about being human, like your divinity is there. You were, you're divine already. We didn't come here just to be divine. I mean, cause we're that already, do you see what I right. mean? We came here to experience more of, of like the different, different flavors, the different forms of, of of uh, of this experience which includes those again those like kind of darker and more saltier flavors in life that we have and through that and to coming to accept that and understanding that that's part of what we're going through then you can reascend you can go back to you know oh uh, yeah, yeah back home and that's and I don't not, that we've ever, not that we've ever left home no but we just forgot we just forgot, you know, we forget. Just, we can be born and we, it's we Maya. Forget. We're in delusion. It's Maya. Yeah. It's just, you know, and that's one thing I find when you say that, Cindy, because I know both Cindy and I, our main day by day life is working and teaching and being in these spiritual communities. And I find actually in a lot of spiritual communities, that is the one thing people avoid the most. Mm-hmm. They avoid that shadow work. They want to just live in the spiritual and they don't, they, they, it's just human nature to try to avoid the darkness where you have to. And, you know, I always, at our courses at AYA, I always start by saying like, forget about light and love for now. Your mm-hmm. first part of this, you're going to be going through some darkness. You're going to be going through some shit. Like it's going to be, it's, you're going to have to, you, you can't go around it. You have to go through it. Um, and that, that is that Saturn. That is that, that we have to have these experiences. Uh, but he was mm-hmm. so funny in Sri Swami Satichananda's commentary, he talks about how once we realize, like have a real big knowing that this human life form is just an experience, we can start to enjoy even the hard things because we have that, you know, we, and, and I think that was so great that he said that because you do all of a sudden remember that you are divine and you're never ending. And so this avatar, this body is just one experience. It's not permanent. And so and that's what I think, you know, the Saturn, the, the juxtaposition between Saturn and the sun, they kind of help each other that way, right? Like Saturn yeah. actually to show you if you ride Saturn properly that you are the eternal light. Right, exactly. Yeah. And Saturn will come in and, it, 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 you know, for a moment it might make you forget because we get so caught up in, yeah, like the everyday and, um, but then so there are strong, you can have those strong Saturn experiences where like someone you, you love died or, or something came to an ending that was very traumatic for you. And it will put you on your path to awakening. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, another fascinating thing about how, how that works. When we start to go and, ha- and, and we have those big Saturn experiences in our life, you're like, whoa, you start asking those bigger questions that, that awaken you, you know, it's like it awakens you back to your light again, or it, it redirects you to what's, you know, 
what what is purpose? What is my purpose? What is my why am I here? And it those happen. Mm -hmm. say those happen in big Saturn moments, you know? Yeah. It, the Saturn, it's, it almost reminds me a lot of, um, this might be a little abstract for people who don't practice yoga, but I say this a lot. Like if you're doing a proper yoga practice, the asana, the postures are the least important, but also the most important because you're using the least important to trigger the most important, which is kind of like what Saturn's doing. It's bringing you, it's using its own matrixy darkness to bring you down to you realize that that's not what you are, right? That you're actually that light. So it's interesting how that kind of mimics, does that make sense? Like it, it kind of uses its own self in order to show you that you're not this, yeah. if that makes sense. I mean, like you're elder. Not. He's an elder, an elder planet, and he represents that aspects of us. It's like that with deep, deep wisdom that comes from dark, dark experiences. You know what I mean? Dark night of the soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you open there fine we've all been crying in the corner it's fine <laughs> um, so you earn you earn your gifts from saturn yeah they're not just like you know here you know you earn them and that but that's what makes them so valuable and that's what makes saturn valuable too sorry guys my dog, we just i'm i'm tracking up the amazon man just came by and my dog cindy's met my dog he's a ham he thinks he is the sheriff of the neighborhood and so i trust me anything that walks by he's got to have a say so i apologize he's barking at the amazon man right now so i apologize so <laughs> but yes yes yeah and i and i do hope that i i do think that you know what i'm finding cindy with this whole unveiling and this this rediscovering of the truth a lot of times what happens when people first realize what's been going on with the dark players, they all of a sudden want to get rid of everything the dark players use. But what people don't understand is that darkness can't create, it can only take from the light. So things like Saturn were already given a purpose by the, by, by the divine. It just got overused. And so if we learn how to individually take that power back and use the template of these energies to, to help guide us, we then again take the power back. It doesn't, it's not a negative, really a negative thing anymore because it's all to, towards our benefit, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I was at the store. I th think I might have told you the story maybe a couple of years ago. I was like in, I don't know, one of the stores, like either Marshall's or TJ Maxx or Home Goods, like one of those trios. I love those and stores. But yeah. I was, <laughs> I was uh, over there. It, it was like in the Home Goods department. And there was these hourglasses, like these glass hourglasses that I kept seeing. And something kept drawing me to these hourglasses. I'm like, oh my God, why? <laughs> why? And it was like, it was like, I want. I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy this hourglass. And I stood it there. It was in my kitchen for a while. I was like, just stared at it for a while. I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? Am I supposed to time something? Like, am I supposed to go like, am I supposed to flip it? And what am I supposed to time? I don't. I, I mean, it took me a minute to figure it out. And then it finally came to me. And, th and this was when we were first starting to like really delve into the into the planets with the coursework that we do. I was like, ah, oh. I was like, it's Saturn. I was like, this is Saturn, because he's time, you know? And I knew at that, you know, at that moment that I was going to be learning understanding more about what saturn really really means and yes we can be scared you can be a frightening planet when you think of like death and time and all this stuff the things that frighten us again they're they're just aspects of our of our humanity that we tend to run from or we don't like but how important it actually is to to face it if we are going to you know, if we, if we are going to illuminate or ascend or enlighten or awaken, whatever, you know, growing consciousness, Saturn was like, mm -mm, you can't ignore me. <laughs> you no, can try yeah. to ignore me all you want to, but, but he's not that, I mean, yes, he, he can bring uh, scary things to you, but again, the, the, the wisdom that comes and just that, that essence of knowing and understanding that he brings I mean, like I said that can't be taken away from you. And you know, it's so funny. I, I, and so my birthday is next week and I, ever Happy since I birthday. got into, oh, well, actually it was, it was funny. It was around the age of 27. Um, I'm way older than 27 now, but, um, I started having like these panic attacks, um, 
like a leading up a week before my birthday, I was starting to have like these massive panic attacks. Like I did not want to have a birthday and I, I got, I'll be 39, uh, net the fourth next Friday. And I, without fail for the last like 12 years, I've, I've really struggled with my birthday and it is that getting older. And I, the last time I was in India, um, before the world ended, um, I, I, uh, was having this like pity party. I was in the shala practicing and I was having this like mental, like breakdown because my birthday was coming up again. And I was having this like panic attack. And I think a lot of it is, is the time and the fact that my life has not been normal. Um, it's, it's not been a contemporary life. And I had this like moment of like, uh, I, I turned in my practice and there's this really famous wall at KPJY, this orange wall where it's got all the pictures of all the teachers and it's got the puja table and it's, it's in all the pictures. It's very famous. And I turned and I saw it and it was like, because I was in such a state of almost depression, I all of a sudden had this realization of how beautiful my life has actually been, even though it, it wasn't, it wasn't what it was supposed to be as I was told it was going to be as a child, but how fantastic it's actually been that I had a, you know, by, by my mid thirties to travel the world and was lucky enough to go to this, this school that's so hard to get into in India and have this relationship with all these people. And so it, it does kind of, even that's a minor, a minor gut punch of their bigger, trust me, there are bigger Saturn gut punches, but I always think about that every time I get towards my birthday and at that, that, that depression, that's that Saturn alien, like time, time is marching on, time is marching on, time is marching on. And then take that moment to take it in and actually sit in that is what I think gave me that opportunity to kind of like reflect when I again saw the wall and reflect on, wait a minute. Thank you, Saturn, for bringing me to a place to actually now appreciate what I've actually been given, you know? So, and that's just a minor thing, guys. There are way bigger Saturn gut punches. I've had bigger Saturn gut punches than that. But again, it's that time thing. And I think a lot of people can relate to that because there are a lot of people who have problems with their birthdays. They, we, we know the midlife crisis. We know all that stuff happens that I think is a big Saturn it's like. It's, it's a real, real feeling when you get those midlife, midlife crisis. Yeah, that is definitely, that's a Saturn gut punch for sure. I mean, I've had that. I've had a few of those. I had one of those when I grew out my gray hair. <laughs> I love your hair. I mean, it was like the psychology of, uh, of growing out my hair. I yeah. mean, and looking and saying, oh my gosh, I'm not 20, I'm not 30. I mean, this is, this is me. This is like the real me. I'm older now. I mean, my hair is gray and, you know, I have more wrinkles and all that is very Saturn too. Like when you get more wrinkles and you got gray hair and you have to look at how your body is processing time and you know that your the time, your time here on this, in this body is very limited. Right. And when, and sometimes, I mean, that will hit you. Like, I mean, you know, that it's like, we grow up knowing that, but then sometimes that will hit you like right here and you're like, Oh my God, you know? Because um, it does creep yeah, up that, on you. It does. Mm -hmm. It creeps up and on you. That, that is a gut punch, but then it also awakens you simultaneously because then you realize, well, I'm not going to be wasting my time anymore, yeah. you know, doing things that I don't want to do. And uh, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy my time, the rest of my time, as best as I can, being yourself, you know, being authentic, right. being who you want to be. But it comes through those those moments of like looking Shit. at yourself and you gray hair, wrinkles, time. Yeah. Time, time is, is that we are it is limited. Our time in our bodies is limited. But then that gives you and that is scary. That is super scary for most humans. But then yeah. once you can like process it through it, it's also a great awakener. Yeah, it's and I'll know other people who don't have issues with like getting older themselves. I have friends who have issues like when their parents start to get sick or if they lose a parent, yeah. all of a sudden that mortality. It's one thing when your grandparent passes or something, but when it's your parent, that is when I think, especially, you know, if you have a parent die young, that's an unexpected accident or something. But when you're older and all of a sudden your, your parents start passing away from old age or, and guess what? You're next. Like you see that kind mm -hmm. of that conveyor belt of, um, of time, you know, it's, it's, or when children get older, like every time my, my nephew is, is nine years, I, he's, I was, let's see, I was about to turn, um, he was born, he, 
I was like 29, 30. So whenever he, he turns his, his next age, I'm like, Oh God, I'm closer to like the next decade, you know? So when he gets older, I'm like, crap, I'm getting old. You know, it's that. And I've, I've heard, I hear parents say that with their kids, like, Oh my God, if you're getting older, that means I'm getting older. You know, I'll never forget my mother. So my mother was a, a kindergarten teacher for a long time. And then when my sister and I were kids, she was a stay at home mom. But then after my sister and I left home, she went back to teaching. And when she finally decided to retire, I remember her saying like, they stay five and I just keep getting older. You know, it's like all of a sudden that youth reminds is another reminder of your own time that, that it's, it's marching on. You know, we see that as yoga teachers, don't we Cindy? We see these 22 year olds come in. We're like, I know. <laughs> you're like, just wait, give yourself 20 more years. So, um, you know, but that, and that, that is one of the most, I mean, what, what do they say? Every fear we have can be traced back to our fear of death. Can't go back to death. To our own the fear of mortality mm -hmm. which is better exactly yeah it'll take you there oh I mean, yeah it will it will definitely take you there um and it's your choice on how you decide to deal with that you can either just go with it understand it gain some wisdom or you can run you know run and hide you can you can try to run and hide all you want to but that's just gonna catch up to you eventually anyway yep. and it's not gonna feel good i'll <laughs> never forget i had denial like denial will only take yeah. you so far but then it doesn't after a while you know it doesn't, it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel right no I had this teacher in high school. I'll never forget it. I, I can't remember what was going on, but a bunch of people in the class were probably something stupid. You know, we were teenagers upset about something. And the teacher was trying, I think it was like an algebra class, like trying to teach. And finally the teacher looks at the students and goes, you know what? Here's a little lesson. No one gets out of this world alive. Like no yeah. one gets out of this world alive. Like, like, come on, snap out of it. No one gets out. Of it. It's, it, you know, but it's true. And I've always remembered that no one gets out of this world alive. Like we all have to, it's like that. Uh, what am I, and I'm not a, I'm actually not a huge fan of poetry, even though I'm a huge literature fan, but one of my favorite poems is, uh, a poet was John Donne. And one of my favorite poems that really affected me, the first time I ever studied it was Death Be Not Proud, because it talks about that, like the, the marching of time, regardless of whether you're a king or a pauper, death is going to take you out and it's going to end eventually. And so again, that's that Saturnalian. And you're right. If you learn, and I know Richard Freeman talks about that, like even the practice of yoga and it, it in essence is preparing you for your own passing. But if you learn to actually accept that, that you're not the matrix, you're not the body, but you are the light, but the body is just a vehicle to find that, then, you, then Saturn's done its job. Yeah. And then there comes the sun. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> it's like that beautiful, beautiful song. Beautiful sun. Um, yeah, and even though we don't want to ignore Saturn when we have those experiences, it's not a good idea to dwell. No. You know, like we've talked about this when even just doing shadow work, right? It's like you learn the lessons, you come out, no need to, to, to dwell in those experiences. If you can, I mean, I know there are certain things that are gonna happen, you can't help it. If someone passes, there's grief. You know, there, there's, a, there's a processing of, of those kind of emotions that happen when you have Saturn periods in your life. But for the most part, whenever you can, uh, return to the sun, you know, yeah. come back to, to life, come back to, don't dwell in death, understand yeah. the death, don't dwell there, but come back to life. Come and I find to... what keeps people dwelling is if they don't want to actually do the work through it. Mm -hmm. when, when issues keep arising like that and keeps bringing you down, it's because you haven't actually, once you work through it, the dwelling is gone, right? It's like, you're able to then kind of move past it and go back to, and that's what, I mean, that's what Alan Watts said, right? That what people go, what's, what's the purpose of life? And Alan Watts would say the purpose of life is to be alive. Yeah. It's just life itself. Simple. It, that's, that's, that's life. That's the first, that's always the first purpose, isn't it? Even Eckhart Tolle says that in the New Earth. Your first purpose is simply to be alive, to, to know yourself, to, to connect with your, your highest being. And then any other purpose that comes after that, that's like a second purpose. Not a bonus. You know? that's, yeah. that's like what comes once you, you've realized you, who you really are. And the sun, yeah. you know, the sun is who you are, that, that light, that Christ consciousness, you know, Archangel Michael, when you, when you call him down, I don't know if you've had experiences with Archangel Michael, but he's pure light. Okay. I've had, and I'll share this. Golden. 
I mean, I know he comes in for a lot of a lot of people in in hues of purple. I see purple. Um, yeah, that's what I see. But yeah, I see lots of gold too. Well, I like, it just like this gold. This just this beautiful golden light that comes in as well. Yeah, I have had a long standing relationship with Michael, and I would feel him around me as a child, and I would see like these purple swirls. And I always ignored it. And then I'll never forget. I was probably in like my mid twenties. Um, I, I had my Jetta at the time. That's how I remember it. I had my Volkswagen Jetta. And I was driving <laughs> on the car. I was driving on the, the road and I could feel it. And I finally got so frustrated. So I think those of us who are like sensitive to the other side, as we're kids, we always try to push it away for a long time. And I was driving on the car and I just screamed at my car. Who are you? Like who you've been, you know, and I, all of a sudden it's just, I'm Michael, Michael. And so I went home and I started like researching like purple light Michael. And I was like, well, I'll be damned. That's an archangel. <laughs> That's like one of the Mac daddies. Like, yeah. And he's yes. been around his whole life. And I still call on him. I still talk to Michael all the time. Um, that out of all the angels, that's the one that I feel the, the closest to. Um, but he, he is, uh, yeah, he's the son. So, um, so I hope, and I hope people, especially those who grew up in a, you know, the religious matrix, which is also another form of that matrix, um, start to understand that all these things are all connected. It's all part of the big, the big cosmos, you know, as, as above, so below, it's all a part of the same system. Um, that's for everyone's highest good. All planets have an archangel associated to yeah. it too. You know, the planets you all know what have Saturn's is? archangels. So we know the sun is my, um, is it Samael? Samael? Is it Samael? I can I have to double it. Double, yeah, double check that, please. But I knew that. It, I think it's Samael. Isn't, uh, what's the moon? I thought this was interesting. You Gabrielle. Gabrielle, yeah. Mercury's Raphael. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> 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 and again, I go back, what are planets? Like, now, like you know, it's so funny. And mm -hmm. we today, so today we will focus on the sun and on a Saturn because they kind of juxtapose. But it's the other, I just learned um, through one of the off-worlder boards that, uh, I think it was, or did you tell me that someone, that the people or the beings of Venus don't have thumbs? And so I've been really fascinated by this. Like, I, I want to go to Venus so bad because I just want to see what that looks like without having thumbs. Um, so, um, you know, I even said to you, I think, because Mercury's in retrograde right now, I was like, I wonder what happens to these other planets when Earth goes into retrograde? I'm like, I wonder if they're like, really, you know, they're like, 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 damn it, like, going retrograde. What do they talk about on their planets? You know, we're, we're just like, dang, Mercury's in retrograde. My computer's giving me all this shit. And like, what do they say on the other planets? Like, Damn, Earth is in retrograde. So right. I don't know. I wonder what happens. I don't know what it was. Like. Well, and it's so funny because we know that Earth is one of the hardest planets to live on. Like for, when a soul chooses to come to planet Earth, you are literally, it's like literally being accepted into Harvard. Like you picked one of the hardest in the third density planet. It's dense. Like this is a dent. And you said this to me, Cindy, I thought this was really spot on that people who are like star seeds who have a soul, a galactic soul, it's hard for them to be in a body. It's hard for them to be in these densities. And so it's almost even more important for those of us who have that to really start working with these elements so that we can get the most out of this experience of being in this density and this body and learning whatever lesson we came here to learn. So, and to be alive, because, you know, there are some fun things about earth too. Earth can be quite fun as well. So it's not all doom and gloom. It's, it's fun. Earth is beautiful, you know? So, so, um, yeah. you start to delve into the planets and how they fit in for you. It gives you some of those answers too. Cause yeah, as a star seed or galactic being that comes into an earth body, you want to resist it because it's hard to be embodied. And so the first step is just coming back in and, and feeling like your body is a safe place to come into right but then having some wisdom and some knowledge about why you're here helps with that and then that's where you can call down the sun you know you can set yeah. a sacred space you can set that and say hey give me some clarity please give me some clarity on what you know, my mission what my what my purpose is at least what's my mission and my, my, my purpose right now uh, and another aspect of the sun too is we, we know this, the sun is male male and it's yeah. also tied to to your father line and what and a kind of relationship that you've had with your father um is uh it's uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how to, it's reflected in your in your chart somehow but it's also reflected by the position of your son within your chart um this relationship that you have with your father that determines a lot about your 
like your characteristics and how you grew up, if your father was supportive of you and supportive of your goals and supportive of who you're becoming, that that has a very specific energy versus like how your mother, so like your maternal, on the maternal side and how she supported you, that's one, that, that's how, that has one energetic characteristic versus how your father supports you. And that is also tied with, tied with your son. It's like that the relationships that you have with the with the fathers, father figures in, in your life. So even daddy issues and mommy issues are in your chart too. So exactly. But those daddy Y'all issues. Got those, don't we? <laughs> I just thought that that was very fascinating as well. How um, I'm trying to see if there's anything. Uh, they will give you, yeah, like if you have a strong paternal parent that's really doing his job and showing up for you, they will give you, they will give the child or give you a sense of like of mission, of self-confidence, because confidence is also an aspect of the sun. We know our solar center. Yeah, solar plexus. Our yep. solar plexus. It's called solar, you know, solar center, yeah. solar, your solar plexus, it's right here, it's your manipura. And if you know anything about, you know, the, the energy centers within your body, the manipura is very much about your confidence and your yeah. power. Yeah. And so anyways, you know, a parent uh, gives the child a strong sense of mission of self of self-confidence, of that unshakable belief that they will succeed that's also a lot of that sun energy as well. That that very much is that's yeah. influenced by the relationship that you have with your father specifically. Well, I thought that that was interesting. That's so as interesting, well. yeah. Because I know I know a lot of people, including myself, have issues with that. So I, that's very interesting. And it's funny ever since I went through, um, because I've noticed my solar uh, solar plex region of my body with the work I've been doing has been starting to change a lot. And I think that because I've established my own boundaries because of those issues with growing up. I've taken control, but before that, it was like a shit show. It was like, because I didn't have you, when you came down, I'm like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. Um, so if, men, if you're listening and you have kids, <laughs> remember yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, and not to say that you can't recover from it and that you can't- no, absolutely, like, I've recovered, yeah. You can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah you know, that you can't fully illuminate your, your son qualities, but it just might mean you have to go through some different challenges. Like there's certain obstacles yeah. that you're going to have. Honestly, I wouldn't change it because I feel like over the last couple of years, especially I've gained a lot of my own power. I found it. And I, but, but you saying that I was like, Oh my God, that makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. You saying that because, and you can see it physically in people like you're right. These manifest in, and the solar plexus are right here. This, you can see it in people's, even their uh, physicality when there's a weakness here. You know, you have people who they're like, oh, I exercise so much. Why isn't this connecting? It's because it's not, it's not here. That's wrong. It's something here that it's an energy. There's a vibration that needs to be shifted. And it's, it's, it makes, just makes so much sense. Absolutely. Yeah, and these past couple of weeks since I've been working and calling down the sun, it's like I said, that wasn't the class that I taught today about intention, but that wasn't the first last week. I felt very drawn to talk about creating space here in your solar plexus, like lifting up out of your rib cages and pulling down through your hips so that you can create space for your solar center to exist. Um, and if this part of you feels deflated, if your core area starts to feel that you're like this, then yep. it makes you feel deflated. Like it yep. mentally makes you feel like you're not big enough or you're not enough or you're not worthy enough or all these things. You have those thoughts. The first thing that goes is, hmm, you know, you collapse yeah. here. And to like to take up room and to shine again, not be afraid. And I, and I think these past couple of years have also made us go like this more because it's like oh six feet away and all this other yeah. stuff it's like you're yeah. not allowed to take up room or you haven't been allowed to take up space it's so funny whatever. in the last couple of years that's what my body's actually changed for the better <laughs> it's like yeah yeah no I absolutely I just I'm just like blown away because I never knew that that's something you've taught me today is with the son connecting to the father line and all I mean I knew it was masculine like we know that and, and I actually and Cindy knows this when I you know when I teach in our at like a Ashtanga Shala when I teach a leg class I just count but at, at Sacred Garden because I only I'm only there once a week I try to do more teaching 
while while I'm while I'm counting the practice because I'm you know that's the only opportunity I have. And I always try to teach about the Syrian Namaskar, the sun salutations as being that pranic rising energy that is masculine because men are pranic, women are aponic, and that is that sun masculine, but we all carry it inside of us and getting that movement, that that igniting of movement of intention, right? Um, pulling in from yeah, the belly button. You talk a lot about the bandhas, right? The mula and the yeah. bandha, which is the upper. Yeah. It, yeah, it, lifts, it helps to lift this up to give some room mm -hmm. for for more expansion or, or like good expansion, not like expansion in your belly like, like that. Like, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. it just gives room for your for your solar plexus to be without feeling like you have to shrink yourself to for whatever reason because we do that a lot right we shrink oh, ourselves yeah. because we're too much of this or too much of that or or people are not going to like us what, or whatever we say that makes us shrink and then the first place that shrinks is your solar and then when your solar plexus goes your heart will go too yeah well that's why i always tell because I, I i tell this story all the time to my students but um in ashtanga yoga we have very extreme back bends we'll just put it that way especially in the second series um very extreme and i i'm pretty good with uh like forward folding leg behind the head stuff it's pretty good but back bending for me is a huge trigger and i actually punched a teacher came out coming out of a back bend once that's how triggered i got but i but i, I like to teach back bending now because it, it, speaking about the sun like when people think about back bending they think about your back bending but it's really about opening up that area of that stomach that stomach area and, it, and your heart center but also the stomach and it puts you in such a vulnerable position because you're having to like expand lengthen and then open um and and it does it can make people like you know i tell students all the time it might make you like clean yourself out like go to the bathroom after backbending sometimes people have to go to the toilet you know and it, it is opening and giving that room again again for that solar plex you know that's opening so it's all comes back to, how amazing is that it's all connected it's all connected and the minute i figured out in my own practice that backbending was less about the back and more about my stomach that's when every my perception on backbending changed a lot um and i always and it, it's amazing but it's giving that space because honestly if you want a six pack and yoga is not about i mean vanity brings you to the mat but it's not really about it's about this but but if you want a six pack do a bunch of back bends not crunches because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. forcing that space and that that area to kind of hold your hold you strong you know and yeah. and that's yeah do a bunch of back bends you'll get a six pack you know, so, um, so, and, but it's, but, it, but that is representing what's happening here that you're opening and expanding here where that sun is. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why so many, I mean, not just, you know, yeah, talking about the, the physical body and, and how you, we put, we put a placement of the sun within our physical body, but how all these cultures, all these ancient cultures, there were sun worshipers mm -hmm. for a reason though. They knew, they knew something. They weren't just sun worshipers just because, you know, that, that they were, like they weird. understood that there was a quality. And we were talking to this person, this person about the Atlantis. I mean, mm -hmm. Atlantis, they were, sent, whenever I see people who come in, because uh, y'all know I do energy healing and energy work and activations and people. And when I'm working with somebody, I can always tell when they're, they have an uh, Atlantis connection, like an Atlantean or Atlantis connection. Because the first thing I will see is just a tremendous amount of gold, 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 gold everywhere in the sun, like sun and gold. And, you know, we talked about how the Egyptians are also like the, um, they're the, they're the ones who inherited a lot, not just yeah. the Egyptians, but they're one of the ones who inherited a lot of the Atlantis information. And it, it, it and, and uh, Egyptians were very cold too. Yeah. I mean, so there's this like the strong connection with the, the sun yeah. and the Atlantis and well, that's the, also Egyptians. The, you know, too. the Egyptians, the sun worshipers. Yeah. as well but you know there's this understanding that the sun is is like it's celestial it's power like, well, and that yes. uh, that also is the Lyran group which is the galactic group of the lion which is the house of judah from the 12 tribes that's why um Lyrans have um human beings who are of the Lyran have like a golden hue to them is because they're coming from that Lyran, which is also because they're, they're, they're one of the oldest souls they were the atlanteans too and that's why like the media would say like orange man bad the orange was literally the Lyran color that was being 
pointed out to you. Um, so I, I, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's all this stuff to me is just so, so fascinating. Um, and so I, I get, I know we've been going over an hour, Cindy, so I don't want to keep you too long, but, um, let's look at your course one last time for people who particular, or want, want to, want to maybe go deeper with you and learn more about this. Um, now this course Which already is, started, right? On the 22nd. No, actually I pushed it that February 9th. No, February 9th. That's right. Yeah. February 9th is when the virtual, the, now the in-person one has already started. So started. I don't know why there's cool. a on there twice. But, but um, okay. that the virtual so one hasn't started yet. We push. Okay, the, and we so push if, that one if out. someone watching right now wants to learn more and work with you more, and they don't live in the area, they can sign up through the virtual. And the, yeah, and they're live. They're not like record. I mean, they can be recorded too, but they're live. And we work uh, with giving you. It's me and Jen. Uh, she's my partner in in crime or partner in this, the partner in planet work um, is uh, we, we also work with, with you and we, we, we tell you, we actually give you instructions of like, okay, we're gonna talk about the sun. In, in this particular course, we, we go into sun and Jupiter and Venus and we okay. spend a month with each one uh, and helping you understand and open up yourself to, you know, all the different qualities of the sun and Jupiter, you know, it's all about, I know we haven't talked about Jupiter, but just real, you know, he's all about expansion and growth and Venus is all about like love and pleasure. Why don't we, do that next week? Why, don't we why don't we talk about Venus and Jupiter next week for people, give a little, mm -hmm. yeah, since we did Saturn in the sun today. And I love how you've looked, you've actually got a little bit of the weird right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there um and i know i, I don't want to embarrass alicia but she's one of uh, the subscribers on this channel and she's been coming to sacred garden and she's been taking my classes your classes too. she's doing this as well isn't she she's doing it in person yeah, she's right doing it in person. yeah she's awesome yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's it's, it's so good. alicia if you're watching let us know in the comment section below how much you like this uh, this course that cindy is offering so, and it's so guys too, if you're feeling if you're stuck you know like we yeah. all have our human experiences we we feel stuck we don't have clarity we don't know what we want to do next or or maybe you know you you are having like financial struggles that's just jupiter thing like you're you're stuck in lack your mind is stuck in in, in these places where you know it's not your truth you know it's not your right. highest truth you know there's something more there's something right. bigger there's something more for you out there and that's what these courses are designed. It's not just information. I yeah. mean, because yes, that's I mean, amazing. we'll give you information, but it's about you and helping you to get unstuck. But we, we do it this way. We use magic. We use planetary magic to get you unstuck versus, you know, just doing it some other way. And, yeah. and it's powerful. This stuff is powerful. And it actually, like, it really works. And, yeah, it does. Uh, it does. It, yeah, it, yeah it, just it gets you out of your own way. Sovereignty yeah. back. You have your sovereignty back to, to yes. understand what you're made of. And if people want have questions, guys, so if you go, to, I'll put the website down in the description box below. But in the about section here, so this is under uh, this is under classes, right? All the uh, I think it's on the yeah, that the one's under contract. that one is under classes because that's a different. Yeah, that one's under, and it's probably on the home page. If you go on the home yeah, page, yeah, well, on the home page. Link. There's a link so to if you it. Need, if you need to email Cindy, have you have questions, just you can go to the contact page. It's right here. Um, I'll put her Instagram and uh, all that as well in the description box. Um, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll go to the, back to this page. So yeah, oh, this is the about. So this is the, this is the Shala. This is the, the yeah. So you can come, there's so much stuff going on. Um, my class is on Sunday. There is no, there is no Zoom option for my classes on Sunday because I need to be able to see you. Um, so, uh, but you can take the all the other garden. classes. Too. Where, if you oh, hit the sacred is. garden, you'll go up at the top. It'll take you to the homepage too. Oh, I was going to show the schedule for these are just the oh, regular okay. classes. Yeah. Though. So if you're not, if you want to just like pop in for a class, um, most of the classes here, you have a virtual option, right? Cindy, it's just my class on Sunday that doesn't have a virtual option. Uh, but most of them do. So if you guys want to take a, uh, just a regular, not a course, but just like a regular 
class with Cindy or any of the other teachers. Uh, she has all the descriptions here. And you can see where the where the virtual options are. Again, my Sunday morning class does not have a virtual option because it's it's a traditional form of yoga. I need to be able to see you and, to, and actually touch you. I know that sounds weird, but I have to touch you. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, humans need humans. It's fine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so you can sign up for any of these classes. Just know, guys, that we are on Eastern time zone. So if you see a, a class starts at 10 a.m., that's 10 a.m. on the east coast of the United States. We're on the same time zone as New York City. So if that helps you give, give you a point of reference if you don't live in the United States. So just work around whatever time that is for you in your country. They will be on live uh, here on the eastern east coast. So, all right. So next week, Cindy, let's do Jupiter and Venus. Yay, they're lovely. I know. I, I actually need to learn more about Jupiter. I know some about Venus, but but Jupiter, I would like to learn more about. So I'm excited. I love Jupiter. I'm a little obsessed with. I get a little obsessed with Jupiter. I worked with him. Oh yay! Good. <laughs> I can't wait then. <laughs> all right, guys. So again, don't forget to subscribe to Cindy, and I will put all of her information down in the description box below. Um, Alicia, if you're watching, let people know what you think of the course down in the comment section since you're taking it live in person and you're now a James. regular. You, oh, James. James too. Yes, James. Uh, my class he, yes. he likes to watch your channel. James, let us know too down in the description <laughs> box below. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that we can we can help spread this knowledge because part of this great awakening, in my opinion, is people figuring this stuff out so they can service themselves and be more and sovereign be, with themselves. And I'll be putting some more. I've, uh, I haven't done anything on my YouTube for about a month just because the end of the year in January comes with it all its own set of stuff I mean, running a business and all that. But I do have a couple of videos that hopefully will be, I'll be putting out there too. So my, my YouTube, in other words, the sacred garden that the YouTube channel should be back active within oh, cool. the next week. Or well, the good thing about your, your practices you have is they never go out of style. So you guys, if you, if you, if you're too intimidated to sign up for a zoom class, like I get that mm -hmm. she has practices on her YouTube channel that you can do in the comfort of your home own home without anybody watching you. So, so that's, that is there as well. So, all right, guys, well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Thursday, because this is going to be aired on Thursday and a wonderful weekend ahead. Again, that's sacred garden yoga with my friend, Cindy. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.